Hello all, our live stream failed because that's what happens. Yeah, we had a few haiku, chatted a bit, lingered a bit. Um, and uh, so now I'm just gonna film it to upload later, but uh, the mood was a bit lost. And then when I started to film it, then the video camera wouldn't work and it would reboot everything. I don't, it's very odd. Um, and, uh, but maybe the poetry will, uh, shift the mood again. I don't know. <laughs> I'm trying. Anyway, uh, Phobion Bowers is the, um, um, edition that I picked up, uh, who's edited this tradition, uh, this, uh, edition of Haiku, um, a bunch of different translators in here now. See if I can make a note of everybody as we go. Um, so I'll, uh, I'm just going to make a note of who we're reading here while, uh, while I remember. This one's by Ishu, uh, Matsui Shigeori, Sh um, Shigeori, it's hard for me to say that one, today anyway. So, um, anyway, uh, just to get the attributions right, I'm trying to make a note of who I read so I can uh, label this better well, or uh, try to. Uh, and this one is translated by uh, Donald Keane from Columbia University. Um, ya. Shibaraku Hananai Taishite Kanatsuko Koto. Hey there. Wait a moment. Before you strike the temple bell at the cherry blossoms. The comment here says, um, in Japan, the lifespan of a cherry flower is only three days, and the poet fears the bell's reverberation will cause the petals to fall sooner than they might otherwise. This is an uh, issue uh, writing in the uh, 1600s. Hey there, wait a moment before you strike the temple bell at the cherry blossoms. to a uh, different poet coming up. This one I'm not. Um, this is from uh, Nishiyama Soin. Uh, the way the camera's set up here, I'm kind of trying to remember to sit back in the chair uh, instead of kind of bench sitting and kind of coming out. So it uh, <laughs> it's uh, imperfect, and I'm not likely to change how I sit for very long. But I'm trying. Uh, and this one is uh, translated by. Um, Asataro, Asataro Miyamori. No, no, not even the cherry blooms can equal the moon of tonight. No, no, not even the cherry blooms can equal the moon of tonight.
So in keeping with your tradition, I'm just kind of flipping through and seeing what reaches me. Okay, this, um, this one is by Shida Yaba. I'm uh, writing here on a, a copy of uh, this book recommended to me by John Painter. Uh, actually has a bookmark in it from uh, Red Pine. Um, so, um, and uh, John Painter just uh, texted me a haiku to read, so I think I set uh, a copy of that here by Busson, um, which I always pronounce French. Busson is probably closer. Uh, but I have a place to where I think I shan't forget. I'm also uh, making a couple notes. For my own writing, I'm uh, checking here. I have a really nice view through the um, the birch here in the library and apothecary, you know, to the white cedar, uh, and some clouds and blue sky beyond through the trident papyrus. Um, uh, and looking under Baba's blanket in this way too, it's just really nice for me. So this is a uh, Shida Yaba, as translated by Alan. Nope, I almost said Allen Ginsberg, and I was wrong. Asatore Miyamori, which I may have said earlier. Um, Behold, violets bloom within the fence of the forbidden ground. Hotoba no kakiyori uchi wa sumide kana. Behold, violets bloom within the fence of the forbidden ground. <laughs> I like that. Uh, so rebellious is nature to authority that it's not even rebellious. For to be rebellious, you must acknowledge authority. <laughs> Uh, we'll read this one next, which I think is a Basho. Is it Chio? Yeah, I think it's Chio. Okay, let's. Uh, This is on page 44 for those of you playing at home. Um, it looks like it's translated by two people. Oh, yeah, 
Patricia Donegan, and Yoshie Ishibashi. And this is uh, by the poet Kagomuchio. Koe Nakuba, Sagi Ushinawamu, Kesa no Yuki. But for their voices, the herons would disappear, this morning snow. Snow has this quieting effect, and perhaps the herons here are white, you know. So there's the camouflage, and of course the herons, that usual stillness. I, could, I was going to say I could see them, but I can see that I could not see them, but hear them. Maybe even hear something that you're looking directly at. The herons that I know around here, Crokina, a pterodactylian way, <laughs> in a way that it seems almost everybody says. That's obviously a pterodactyl. I don't know why. They all seem to think they know what one sounds like, sounded like. But I, I feel like I agree <laughs> when it happens. This is croaking. But for their voices, the herons would disappear this morning's snow. Maybe <sighs> we'll read this next, because it's. No, oh, that's that perfect. That's a bousson. That is best translated. Busan. Oh, it's Busan. <sighs> I think I should look that up and learn some more. Uh, but this uh, one is played, uh, William J. Higginson is the uh, translator here. I read this kind of all at once, as I do with haiku quite often, um, like optical reading, you know. And uh, it, it felt like, boy, after uh, that previous Geo piece, uh, this is the one. Fuji Hitotsu. Uzumi nokish nokoshite. I could do better. Fuji hitotsu uzumi nokoshite wakabakana. Fuji alone remains unburied. The young leaves. Fuji alone remains unburied, the young leaves. And with that, I will transition to the uh, one sent in by John. Um, also by Busan. A summer river being crossed. How pleasant, with sandals in my hands. A summer river being crossed. How pleasant, with sandals in my hands. Perhaps it's read, how pleasant with sandals in my hands. The pleasantness has more to do with the barefooted crossing, perhaps, than the crossing of the river. I'd imagine the summer river is a, a 
relatively full. A summer river being crossed. How pleasant with sandals in my hands. I think that's all I have in me. I mean, I have tea in me too. But um, the uh, Facebook Live failed yet again. Lost the um, the energy, I guess, of um, uh, the first try, but we came back, and uh, you know, we had five or six, or seven, whatever pieces. So thank you for joining in. Enjoy.